What is the best fun car for $45,000? Well, we've got two of them lined up here, ready for a drag race at the Airstrip. What you want, Tommy, is a brand new 2024 Honda Civic Type R. Yeah, you're wrong about that one, Case. What you really want is a new 2024 Ford Mustang GT, the S650 generation. Yeah, Case's Gen 4 Coyote sounds absolutely insane, especially in track mode. Well, the Civic Type R is a car for people who have neighbors. Neighbors that you want to keep in your good graces, that's for sure. All right, so I'm going to count down the drag race whenever you're ready. Basically, I'm going to go three, two, one, go. I've gone into drag strip in the S650 Mustang. Um, are you in your, your sportiest setting? I'm in the plus R mode, but I'm actually leaving traction control on because this car really likes to roast those front tires. <laughs> Right, you ready? Here we go. In three, two, one, go. Oh, we got a good launch. And there goes the five liter Coyote V8, chirped second gear, and he's just becoming a dot in my rearview mirror. Oh my God, I got a good launch and it doesn't even matter. <laughs> There's so much power in that Mustang. This 10 speed shifts like an absolute that was actually a better race than I thought. How was that, Case? What'd you do? Well, I'll tell you what. I got a 15.5 at 99 miles per hour here at a mile above sea level on an unprepped surface. And this Civic, again, really likes to spin those front tires. I was pretty happy with my launch, but what'd you get? I have no idea because I was in the wrong zero to 60 mode on the solo. So I'm gonna go run it again and then I'll tell you. That was pretty dumb. I am pretty happy though. Uh, I had you off the launch and then that Mustang just got into the top end and there was nothing for me to do. Got a better jump than him. I know. He's chirping third though. Yeah. Yeah. There is a little bit of a power deficit it's a here. Bit. <laughs> Three, two, one, go. Oh, great launch of the Mustang. I found that no brake torque, just planting it's the way to go. Car shifts hard. It drag boats super hard. There's 95 miles an hour already across 100 miles an hour. And I just ran a 1366. 1366. That's pretty spicy. Yeah, 111.7. <laughs> Yeah, it's trap speed is moving. Yeah, I mean, look, so it's the mile above sea level is what's killing this NA engine, right? Um, and of course, we're not accounting for rollout. That's just right from uh, right from zero. So yeah, pretty good time on the Mustang. Um, yeah, pretty impressed with that overall. Case, walk me through some of the performance specs in this Type R. It's impressive. This is a two-liter four-cylinder turbo, obviously six-speed manual front wheel drive and it makes 315 horsepower, 310 pound feet of torque, which is a lot of power and a lot of torque for a front wheel drive car. Yeah, this does use that dual axis strut front suspension. And what's amazing about this car, let me downshift in a second here, full throttle, look at that, straight as an arrow. Yeah. That's impressive. It doesn't torque steer, but especially off the line, even if you're just driving around regularly, when this comes on to boost, it does so with a vengeance and it loves to roast those front tires. Now, the engine in this vehicle, right? The K20C1, four cylinder turbo, two liter in displacement. What I really like about this engine is it doesn't make peak power until like 6,500 RPM. So it's kind of got that classic Honda yeah. high RPM fun, you know? But you still get a really solid punch of torque at the low end, so you're not lacking. Yeah, I mean, the other thing I'm noticing too, just turning this car around, you notice it's the second you get behind the wheel, the six-speed transmission, maybe one of the best oh. feeling transmissions ever made. It's a phenomenal transmission, and they beefed it up to handle the extra power that this makes over the previous generation car. I also want to talk a little bit about the interior in this car, because it feels noticeably more special than a standard Civic. They did a really nice job differentiating it. So obviously you have like the red Honda logos and some red stitching here and there, but the primary difference has to be the Type R bucket seats. Yeah, these seats are pretty crazy. One disadvantage, no heated seats. 
but they grip you really well, almost too well. It might be a little uncomfortable on a road trip, but they look spectacular. You got red seat belts on me, yeah. red carpets. This is a cool car. It's a really cool interior, especially. And what I would tell you about the seats is, if you were a wider individual, if you were like a normally <laughs> sized individual, even yeah, by, American, skinny like us. <laughs> by American standards, you're probably not gonna wanna do more than two hours in these seats. Yeah. Because they're pretty narrow. They are pretty narrow. And the other thing is, this is a performance car in all metrics. Feel that wheel spin? Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, this suspension, especially here in Colorado where our roads aren't the best, the suspension beats you up a little bit in this. Yeah, but look at that high speed stability, 90 miles an hour, 100 miles an hour. I mean, you can be taking a nap doing 120 in this car. It is so stable. And then yeah. when you get on the brakes, I mean, look at that. There is. Incredible. Impressive. I also love the shift lights that you have there on the dash give you a really cool feeling when you're revving it through the gears and you see those lights light up. It's just a fun car to drive. The other thing which I'm just blown away with is the steering in this car is just so quick, so responsive. And look, it's an, it's an electronic power steering setup, right? An electric power steering setup. But it gives you really good feel. Yeah. Compare this to like an E-Pass system from a couple years ago that were just so dead, you couldn't really tell what was happening beyond center. This thing is beautifully, yeah, beautifully engineered. The other nice thing that you can't forget is that we're comparing two performance cars, but because this is front-wheel drive, even in a snowy climate like Colorado, you could still drive it in the winter, and because you've got four doors in that hatch, you can take your friends with you, you can take more stuff with you, so it is going to be in a lot of ways a more usable car. Now let's talk about some things which maybe aren't so good, Case. Um, the technology, we've got a 9-inch screen in this car. Yeah. Very easy to use, but at this price point of 45000 it's looking a little small. Yeah, it is. It's not the best suite of tech, especially for the money and to some of the things that we already discussed. It is compromised as far as a practical car goes. So this is only a 4-seater, it's not a 5-seater, so you can't sit somebody in the middle back there and it is just stiff, I think. That's the biggest thing that stands out to me that would be a little hard to live with at times. And it has a tiny fuel tank. Yeah. So a couple hundred miles of fun and, and you're gonna be filling up. Uh, it could use a bigger fuel tank. Um, and other thing too is, you know, 265 width tire, 19 inch wheel, low profile, like you mentioned, right? As fun as it is on this closed course and just the tossability oh, yeah. and the incredible turn in, um, you get this tire wheel set up out in the real world, in the Midwest, we have potholes. Oh yeah. It's pretty, pretty firm. It might suffer. It's pretty aggressive, 100%. So now, Case, the thing that we got to talk about, right, $45,000 Civic. Is, is it worth $45,000? It's a tough call because this is actually a pretty competitive segment right now. There's a lot of really good cars that are competing against this, like the GR Corolla. And uh, it depends on your use case. I think you could definitely make a case for this being worth 45 grand, but should you pick it over some of the other cars that you can get that it competes against? Tough call. It is a tough call, right? I mean, I kind of go back and forth because from a chassis dynamic standpoint, especially a transmission, this vehicle is far ahead of the Corolla, the GR Corolla, yep. or like a WRX, um, or even like a manual transmission Mustang. I mean, there's just so many incredible precision components in this vehicle that allow it to handle like it does. However, it is still a Civic, right? Yeah. So as nice as these seats are, right, you still have a fairly basic set of controls, you still have a pretty basic set of interior features in here. So it, it, it's, a, it's a tough call, and then you also don't get all-wheel drive like you do with Toyota. Yeah. Uh, but compared to the Mustang, look, 45 grand, both performance-oriented cars, but they, they really couldn't be more different. If you really care about what your car drives like in the canyons, if you really want a focus on steering, transmission interaction, braking performance, this car is miles ahead of the board. Absolutely. But if you live in Kansas and you just want to go incredibly quick in a straight <laughs> line, I mean, the Ford's going to do that better. So, okay, it's clearly in the quarter mile, the Mustang is a quicker car, no surprise. There's <laughs> a lot more power in this Ford, but what if we take the launch out of it completely and do a roll race? What does that car weigh? 
Well, this car weighs around about 3,200 pounds, which is pretty light for a modern car. That is pretty light for a modern car. I mean, if you compare it to this Mustang, this thing's top of the scales at right around 3,800 pounds. We're looking at 600 pounds more, or roughly the weight of one American. So it's a pretty, uh, <laughs> pretty uh, good size difference. The other nice thing here is that with the rolling race, we typically take a little bit of the distance out of the equation. So you might not have as much time to run away from me. And we are a mile above sea level, so even though you are making way more power, the turbo in this Civic Type R does help. And just to make it a little bit more interesting, I'm just going to leave this Mustang in drag mode in drive, letting the transmission decide what to do, whereas you got the manual so you can be more selective. Let's see how they do. Man, that engine sounds so good in track mode. There's 15, 25, 30, in 3, 2, 1, go! better than over 7,000 RPM redline. Come on, Mustang! Even with this car being able to pull away a little bit at the beginning, because it's light, there's, <laughs> there's no staying with the stay. Well, you know, dude, I have to say, I definitely won that. There's no doubt around it. But, you know, for considering you have like over 150 less horsepower, that car really kept up. Oh, especially right off the crack, that weight difference definitely let me pull out ahead. And then as soon as the Mustang downshifted and got into the top end, once again, horsepower wins drag races. 100%, yeah, I mean, the weight difference is big, the altitude was in your favor, but you know, 160 horsepower different, it's not gonna, it's not gonna come back with that. Now look, we all know that a big bad V8 Mustang is fast in a straight line, but there's a lot more to a performance car than straight line. And we have this big drag strip, I'd say we should do a braking test. All right, all right, I'm digging that. Do you mind if I go swap for the performance pack Mustang really quick and uh, <laughs> I'll be right back. I think that's how that works, Tommy, but uh, tell me a little bit about what running gear you've got. Well, look, for 45 grand, you can't really get a dark horse or a performance pack Mustang, so you're gonna end up with a base GT, which is still running Brembos, but they're the small Brembos. Um, and we're also running a set of all season tires, 265s, Continental, which is actually smaller in width than the tire on that Type R. Yeah, I've got a pretty mean set of tires on this Type R. It's Michelin Pilot Sport S's 265, so they're actually a little bit wider than your Continental Pro Contacts, and I've got massive 350 millimeter Brembos on this car. Yeah, okay, well, okay. Granted, braking is kind of important in a performance car, but let's see what happens in the real world. We're gonna go up to 60, and then slam on the anchor, see which one comes to a stop first. Here's the other thing about this car. It weighs a lot less than that Mustang, which means I've got less mass that I have to bring to a stop here when we go slam on the brakes. Right, I, got 60 there. I feel pretty good about this. Oh, yeah. Beat him by about a car length. Wow. That's a pretty big difference, and I noticed yours kind of stopped in a straight line where mine did kind of an alarming squiggle. Yeah, I'd say it's, uh, you know, about a car length, if not just a little bit more. All right, my dude, from 60 miles an hour, you came to stop at 111 feet. You know, I would personally hope for a little bit more in a car that's got almost 500 horsepower. You know, I think you're right. I understand that the performance pack is more expensive and it's an option and it's a track focused one, but even in the standard one, I'd hope for some better brakes. Yeah. Oh, that's real good. 91 feet, so 20 feet less in the Civic compared to the Mustang. Yeah, which especially on a track makes a huge difference. And again, speaking of having these cars on a traditional track, this car is lighter, it's stiffer, it's got better brakes. It's not as fast in a straight line, but there's a lot of advantages to this. Oh, I gotta tell you what, Tommy, right off the bat, I like that. Does sound great. So this car, let's talk about the spec on this car, right? It's, it's pretty much realistically one of the cheapest Mustangs you're gonna find in the real world. So it's a base GT. It's got three options. It's got the automatic transmission, which is a, it's got the performance <laughs> exhaust, which is awesome. And it's got dual zone climate control, which is like, who cares? Um, and we bought this car for 42. 
<laughs> I don't hate that. And that's why we bought this car. But let me show you a problem. Get on the throttle, take it up to about 110. Hey. Feels good. I'll do what you say. Feels good. Oh. Start to feel a little light. Fucked. And then right about there, you're like, okay. And then you get on the brakes. You feel that? Yeah, that's weird. So. It, it feels like it gets a little light and we're floating yeah. and then you get on the brakes and it dives back and forth and this is definitely a softer more comfortable suspension on public roads right but you start to push it like that and you see the downside and that really really demonstrates the difference of these cars I mean with the Mustang you're buying really the engine and the looks yeah because it is an incredible engine a 5 liter Coyote with 485 horse um, and, and you're buying you know the incredible Mustang looks but from a chassis dynamic standpoint it's a little soft and squidgy it is this feels like a Grand Tourer it doesn't feel like a honed focused performance machine through and through you know 100% yeah now that engine is fantastic oh yeah um, so you get a little bit more horsepower if you get the um, performance exhaust which is cool and you get in the Gen 4 Coyote, you've got a new dual intake setup, you've got a new oil pan, um, got a couple of changes, and, and the engine is just the star of the show. It was, it's what makes this car so good. But from a chassis dynamic standpoint, if you really, yeah, right, I mean, it's yeah, all it feels, over the place. It feels a little, a little lazy and a little loose. And you could say, well, let's just get the performance pack car, but then you're going to be spending 60 grand. Exactly. So you can make a Mustang be just as old and performance oriented as that Civic Type R, but then you're looking at a very different tax bracket. Yeah. For the mid $40,000 range, both of these cars are a ton of fun. The Honda is a much more engaging car to drive. It's much more fun on a back road and it just handles so much better. If you're looking for a daily driver or a road tripper, the Mustang is a fantastic value with a ton of power. Just don't expect it to keep up with the Honda on a back road. As always, this has been Tommy Case and Behind the Camera Alex. We'll see you on the next video.